Good morning. Welcome. My name is Erin Stilato. This session is Why You Need Query Store. This is the yay me slide. The short story is that for nine years I've been a consultant and for the last six I have taught a lot about Query Store and I've worked with customers a lot about Query Store. So the fact that I now work at Microsoft doesn't matter, right? I've only been there for six weeks. You and I both know that I don't know what I'm doing there yet. So I am coming from the perspective of why do I need to use this tool in my environment? If you need to contact me because you don't have time to ask me a question today, send me an email or hit me up on Twitter or find me at some point over the next few days. This is my abstract, which I'm not going to read to you because I assume that you've already read it and you want to know why you need to use Query Store, which means I'm not going to spend any time in slides. I'm going to show you in a demo why you need it because I need you to see it to understand the value of what this brings. So your scenario is someone comes in and says, I don't know what happened, but all of a sudden this query sucks. Historically, right, you've had to hop into SQL Server and start using DMVs, extended events, anything you've set up to try to figure out what is happening right now that's so poor and what did it used to look like. And the problem is, is that unless you know what it used to look like, unless you had a baseline, it was really hard to know where something all of a sudden fell apart. So what we have within Query Store, this is already set up in my database, is we can go into a report, which is called Top Resource Consuming Queries. And if you've never looked at this, I'm going to spend a second to give you some orientation. On the top left, you have a bar graph, which gives us a visual display of what query performance looks like over time. By default, when you come in here, this is giving you duration, total, for the last hour, OK? So that's always the default. There's no way to change that. You're going to have to wait, OK? Um, so top left says, here's what the queries have looked like in terms of performance for the past hour. And what I like about that visual is I can see scale relative to other queries. But in order to see the query, I have to hover over it and wait for this window to pop up. And I want to see all of the query text. So what I tend to do is I flip into this grid view. In this grid view, this is going to come up. And now I can see the object to which the query belongs, the text. And one of my favorite things is if I scroll over to the right, I can see a plan count for the queries. So very often, when performance has suddenly tanked, my issue is that I've had a plan change, right? Something's recompiled, um, stats updated, something fell out of cache, came back in, and performance is poor. So I could see what the plan looks like now using the DMVs, but I couldn't see what it looked like before without Query Store. So we come in here because we've got a complaint that performance is suddenly poor, and I identify this query, which has two different plans. And if I, again, if I scroll to the left, I can see the object that it belongs to. So I have my find order by description, and I also have this customer transaction info. And you can see that when I highlight that query, that store procedure, on the right, I have two plan IDs. The plan IDs are 8354 and 8849 represented by circles of different color. And the bottom is my time. So I can see what plans have been executing over time and what performance looks like. And I can highlight these plans. And at the bottom, right, it shows me what that plan actually is. So I can see that right now I have a clustered index scan. And if I look at my other plan, I can see that this is a index seek with the key lookup into a nested loop. Classic, classic, right? Parameter sensitive, parameter uh, sniffing scenario, where with one parameter, I get one plan. With a different parameter, I get another plan. I could have n number of plans. But here's my case where performance suddenly tanked because we switched to the clustered index scan, and I have to figure out why and how to fix it. 
Now today, right, in Management Studio, in your environment, to fix this, you could go recompile the stored procedure, right, manually. You could <laughs> clear the plan cache entirely. You could drop just that query from the plan cache. And then you hope that the next user who runs the query runs it with the parameters that bring you the index seek with the key lookup, right, that, that works well. But hoping isn't really what we want to do, because then you're just spending all day, all week, all month, waiting for the problem to happen again. So what we can do with Query Store is we can force a plan. We can say, this plan right here, with the index seek and the key lookup, I know that this is the most stable plan for this query. This is consistently what I want to do. But I also know, by the way, that there's that non-clustered index there, and that really I need to create the non-clustered index, but my devs aren't going to let me create that right now. So my long-term solution is I need to address the code or I need to address the schema. My short-term solution is I'm going to force the plan. So right now, this 8849, this is the one that's running. This is the plan that's being used. It's in the plan cache. But if I'm going to force this, right, I get a pop-up box. Do I want to force this plan? I do. So I'm going to say yes. And what you'll see happen is that this plan now has the checkbox. That means that that is the force plan. Now, how am I going to know that that's being used here? Well, if I refresh, you see this just popped up down here. So by forcing it, even though the clustered index scan is what was in cache, when I force the index seek with the key lookup, SQL Server says, OK, we're going to get rid of what was in cache. And we know that this is a good plan. And you're forcing it. So that's the one that we're going to use moving forward. So until I can put that non-clustered index in place, this is my solution. So that's step number one of why you, reason number one and two of why you need to use Query Store. The first one is it makes it really easy to find problems. The second is that I can manually force plans to stabilize performance for a query when there's a problem until I can get a long-term fix in place. The third is that you actually don't have to spend time doing this manually. So if we come over here, I have another copy of the Wide World Importers database that we're using. And I'm going to turn on automatic plan correction. So rather than going in and forcing a plan manually, I'm going to let SQL Server decide when that should happen. So I'll enable this within my database, and then I'm going to create a stored procedure to use. And this stored procedure is exactly the one we were just looking at, where we're asking for a customer ID and we're doing an aggregate uh, against the customer transactions table for a specific customer ID. And you've already seen that this query is parameter sensitive because of the distribution of data in this table. So I'll go ahead and run that. Store procedures created. And then within here, I'm going to go ahead and run my workload, which is just a couple clients that are going to run that stored procedure in the background. And within my query store reports, so now we're going to go to my other Wide World, Importer, Wide World Importers database, which is B. Within this report, if I come in and I look at top resource consuming queries, and again, I'm going to switch to the grid view because it's easier for me to look at. Here in my grid view, I have this plan that you and I have already seen, my index seek with the key lookup. So life is good in this environment. But now we're going to create that scenario that the user just complained about. We're going to introduce a regression. And to do that, we're going to run this script right here, which basically clears procedure cache for that database. Not a nice thing to do. Don't do that in production. And then we're going to run this immediately with the customer ID of 401. And 401 is a non-unique value. 401 is going to cause a clustered index scan. So we're going to cause a regression right here. So let's do that. Let's run the other script. So right now, 
right? You can see that we have this plan, plan ID 1, which is our index seek with the key lookup. Once my other script runs, let's make sure that it did. Not yet. Hold on. My laptop might be a little bit sad because I might be running a little bit much in terms of my workload. So let me fire this up again, and let's verify <laughs> that what I wanted to happen happened. So here's plan ID 1, which we saw before. And now you can see that that has been forced. So what the heck happened here? Because before, we just had plan ID 1, and that was it. Now all of a sudden, we have plan ID 43, and plan ID 1 has been forced. So here's plan ID 43. When I introduced the regression, that clustered index scan plan came into cache. And SQL Server said, hang on, your query is regressed. So I'm going to go and I'm going to force for you automatically the last known good plan, which it did. Now, if you're looking at this, you could be looking at this and thinking, oh, I don't understand how this is a regression. Like, in general, we feel like a nested loop is better than a clustered index scan. But how is this a regression based on numbers? Well, we're looking at total duration here. And the regression algorithm is based on average CPU. So if I change my configuration over here to CPU and then average, now you can see that plan ID 1, the CPU over here was really, really low, right? 15, 20 maybe. Plan ID 43, CPU was greater than 100. So that change in average CPU exceeded the threshold. And SQL Server said, I'm going to automatically force that. And you can view this information within DMDB tuning recommendations. So if we take a look there, we can see that SQL Server tells us exactly what it did. It says your average query time changed from 18 to 128. And it tells us what the plan IDs are, the regressed plan and the forced plan. And it also tells us when it did that. And then this sits in a verifying state. It continues to make sure that this plan is a good plan. And if for some reason it's not, it will automatically unforce it. The other things that will cause unforcing besides uh, a regression are if forcing fails for some reason, or if there's a recompile because of a stats update or a schema change. So if, we, if you remember, when we originally looked at this plan, we, we saw that there was a missing index recommendation. So we'll go in and we'll create that. I still have this query running in the background. And let me go to my script and create the recommended index. So once this creates, if I come back to my top resource consuming queries and I refresh, you'll notice that that plan was, all I did was run that script to create the non-clustered index. But that was a schema change. So it automatically unforced. And then the query went through normal compilation optimization. We get a new plan, plan ID 51. And if we look at plan ID 51, we can see that, sure enough, that new index is used. So you didn't have to do a thing other than turn on automatic plan correction. And this means that when queries regress, SQL Server will go in and automatically force the last good plan for you so that you don't have to get the phone call you don't have to deal with it on the weekend in the middle of the night. And then proactively, because this is not a long-term solution, proactively, you're going to monitor what's being forced over and over again so that you can take that information and give it to the dev team and say, this is what I need you to fix. Questions? Yes? Is there a cost? That is the number one question I get asked. You really want to know what's the performance overhead, right? Not the dollar cost. What's the performance overhead? That depends. It depends on your workload. It also depends on your SQL Server version. Statement number one, there are many fixes that have been added to 2019, 2017, and all the way back to 2016. You need to typically be on the latest cumulative update. 
Um, I can pull the specific ones for you, but the latest one has these fixes. Factor number two is your workload. So those of you that have a very ad hoc workload, Entity Framework, and Hibernate, Link to SQL, crazy developers who are doing their own thing, right? You have a problem with your workload. You know that, right? Independent of Query Store. When you put Query Store on top of that, it will look like Query Store has introduced the problem. But the issue is that the large number of ad hoc queries that you have, which bloat your plan cache, are also going to bloat Query Store. They're going to cause Query Store to be really large, and they are going to cause the amount of memory that you need to hold information about Query Store to be large. And that's not always good. Now, in SQL Server 2019, you have a solution for that, which is a new capture mode, which is called custom capture mode, where you can set the thresholds that determine what queries get captured in Query Store. So the best thing is if you're on 2019 latest CU, you're, I think you're really good to go regardless of what kind of workload you're on. If you're on 2016 and 2017, you may not be able to use Query Store with a very ad hoc workload until you get to 2019. Okay? Azure SQL Database has all that as well. Good question. What else? Correct. So the question is, the example that I show, showed was a good query that went bad. And so you're saying, what happens if I have a bad query that becomes good? Well, that's a happy thing. So what are you saying in, ah, would it then force the good plan? No. It's only going to force on a regression, right? So it's smart enough to know when there's a problem, but it's not smart enough to say, oh, plan A, plan B, plan C. I really like plan C. I'm going to force that. Because maybe plan D is even better than plan C, right? So it's only going to force on a regression. Yes? Why might not you want to turn it on immediately? For the performance reasons that I mentioned, I'd want to verify your version. I would want to verify uh, what uh, um, cumulative update you're running on that. And I want to understand your workload. So I actually have a blog post that talks about this. I'll just bring this up right here. Uh, it is called, oops. Query store best practices. So this was updated uh, 2019, but I've gone back and, and taken a look at it over time. And then there's this other blog post, which is called Query Store Performance Overhead, which is going to answer probably a lot of questions for some of you, which talks about some history, but then these new fixes that have been added. And it talks about what those fixes are and what release you need to be running. So those two posts should get, you should read, because I can't give you all that in 20 minutes, right? You should read before you go turn it on. Other questions? Ah, is Query Store suitable for data warehousing? Absolutely. I have, uh, I know customers who are using it on their data warehouse. So OLTP, hybrid, mixed environment, data warehouse, whatever you need. It is available in Azure SQL D and managed instance. In fact, it's turned on by default there, and it will be turned on by default in SQL Server 2022. Yep. OK. Any other questions? OK, so my question to you is, who is going to go turn it on? OK, those of you that are not, now you need to tell me why. It's already on. OK, so if it's not already on and you're not convinced to go turn it on, what's your hesitation still? Excellent. My work here is done. Thank you. I should have, I should remind you, feedback, please do that. Please send me an email if you need it. All that good stuff. But thank you for coming.